That is Mark chapter 10. All right, and uh, so drop down to verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people. So you can get the picture in your mind. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side, Doing what? Begging. And I read this and I thought, I see this, I see this scene many times in, in the city of Las Vegas. And really, not just in this city, but I think probably almost every city. And, but he's, beyond the fact that he's begging, is he's blind. And uh, that's, uh, that's a tough situation, amen? You know, that's a tough situation. And uh, so... You know, it's like, does anybody care? Can anybody help? I mean, what a life, right? What a life. Sitting by the highway side, sitting by the side of the highway, what's his, what's his life description? Day after day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. What does is, what is Bartimaeus do? Well, he sits by the highway side begging. He goes to bed. He sleeps. He wakes up. He's hungry. And there he goes again by the highway side begging. Um, and, boy, there's a lot to be thankful for. If you can see... Thank God. Amen. Thank God if your eyes are well and healthy. Wow. You know, somebody said, no matter how, how tough we think we have it, there's always somebody else that's got it just a little bit tougher. Wow. Wow. So in verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. So his eyes are not working, but you know what is working? His ears are working, amen? His ears are working. And, uh, and you know what? This is a very wise man. He may be a very poor man. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, we, we've been looking at some lessons about the poor and the rich. Uh, but tonight, uh, you know, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach. Um, to preach and, uh, and recovering of sight to the blind. So that's what we're looking at tonight is the recovering of sight to the blind. And this is a very wise man. He's a very wise man because when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to do what? In verse 47, he began to cry out. He began to cry out. And as he began to cry out, the first word out of his mouth was what? Jesus. He's a, he's a very wise man. <clears throat> and uh, so, you know what he's doing? He's doing the same thing that we did just moments ago. He's, he's praying. Someone said, prayer is talking to 
God. And, and he's praying. He's literally praying. But there's something, uh, there's something uh, in particular I want you to see about his prayer. And, and it's the first word of his prayer. Jesus. Wow. Think about that. He begins the prayer by praying, by crying out to Jesus. And that's what prayer is. It's talking to Jesus. You know, so he's praying. Very wise man. Um, now, you'll need to mark your place, you know, somehow. Uh, but I want you to see in uh, John chapter 14... In John chapter 14, uh, why it's so important to, when we pray, to pray uh, to Jesus and to pray in Jesus' name. Um, John 14, 13 and 14, and whatsoever ye shall ask in, watch this, in my name, what does Jesus promise? Are you looking? John 14, 13. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. You see that? That will I do. And the reason he'll do it is that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You know, he wants to glorify his heavenly Father. So, Blind Bartimaeus, the first word in his prayer is Jesus. So he's praying, and he's praying to Jesus, and he's praying in Jesus' name. And Jesus says in verse 14, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And, of course, I'm sure we understand that uh, these prayers are according to the will of God, according to the word of God. They're prayers that honor God. And so uh, that's what he's doing. Now, um, he says, thou son of David, he says, have what on me, class? Have mercy on me. And uh, this blesses God. This blesses him very much that he's, uh, he's praying, he's praying, have mercy on me. Now what, what he's saying, when, when he says have mercy on me, here's what he's saying to Jesus. He's saying, I'm asking you for something, and I know I don't deserve it. And so right now, you're seeing a spirit of what in Bartimaeus? He has a spirit of humility. And you know what? Um, that, that pleases God that pleases God very much. Um, in fact, I want you to look at uh, Psalm 138, verse 6. I hope I, hope, uh, I got that right. Psalm 138, verse 6. Yeah, that's it. Psalm 138, verse 6 says... Psalm 138, verse 6. Uh, Though the Lord be high, yet he hath respect unto the lowly. That's the humble. Not the haughty, not the high-minded, but the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. And so, you know, this Bartimaeus is a wise man. He begins his prayer in Jesus' name, and also 
He is praying in a spirit of total humility or lowliness. Um, go to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And um, so let's get over to 1 Peter chapter 5. All right, 1 Peter chapter 5. And in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, And uh, I, want you to, I want you to go down to part B of that verse where it says, For God, in verse 5, For God resisteth the whom? The proud. And giveth grace or help. Grace meaning, you know, God's help to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So, he's such a wise man in uh, the fact that he's, he's, he's got a real spirit of humility. Um, and uh, very lowly. Um, now, but I want you to see this. There's another important truth about his prayer. And, and we'll, we'll see this in James chapter 1. If you would, please. James chapter number 1. Hebrews and James. So James chapter 1. Now, um, there's another important component. And not only must we ask in Jesus' name, but we must ask in faith. We must ask in faith. And you know what? That's what he's doing. Look at this in James 1, verse 6, 7, and 8. James 1, 6, 7, and 8. But let, but let him ask in what class? In faith. Nothing wavering. So, we're to ask in faith... Believing that as we ask in Jesus' name that we claim the promise of Jesus, I will do it. You know, I have a list of prayer requests um, tonight. Esteban's praying for spiritual growth. Um, we're asking God to bless Sunday services. We've asked God to bless the Bible study. We, you know, um, we've asked God to bless you men with work. And you know what, by the way? That is God's will that, you know, if we want to eat, we work. <laughs> That's the Bible way. Um, we've, we've asked God for, you know, miracles of healing, which would glorify God. Those are prayers that all glorify God. And we've asked in Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord, and we're to ask in faith. And you know what? Jesus says uh, that if we'll ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See, you know what God wants us to do? He wants us to believe him. He wants us to believe him. Now, if you would, please go back to Mark. I, I, chapter 10 is probably where your marker is. But I want you to look, I want you to look at uh, Mark 11 and verse 22. Um, and 24 so uh, mark 11 verse 22 and jesus answering saith unto them have what class in god have faith in god nothing wavering not, not like the wave of the sea all over the place you know bouncing around 
in doubt and fear and unbelief and no in faith have faith in God look at verse 24 Mark 11, verse 24, Therefore, again, this is Jesus, I, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, do what, class? Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall what? Have them, and ye shall have them. <laughs> See, the key is, that when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name, and when we pray, we pray in faith, believing. Believing what Jesus promised. And what did he promise? I will do it. He didn't say I might do it. He said, I will do it. And of course, in context, of scripture we're talking about prayers that go along with the word of God prayers that honor the word of God you know effective prayer effective prayer powerful prayer is prayer that is in line with God's will when those prayers line up with God's will then that's the prayer that God, that moves God and that God will bless and that God will honor. So when I'm praying prayers that are according to the will of God because it's what the Word of God says, then those are the prayers that God is answering. So, he's a very wise man. He's a very wise, he's a very wise man. He's really, he's really a great teacher, blind Bartimaeus is. You know, when you look at what he's doing, now, I want you to notice in verse 48 of Mark 10, please, in verse number 48, and, uh, and many charged him. Remember, there's a big crowd walking along with Jesus and the disciples. There's a lot of people. You know, usually that means thousands of people. Well, let's find Jesus being crowded by thousands of people. And many charged him, you know, charged means they, they commanded him, they ordered him that he, that he should hold his peace. Because what's he doing? What's Bartimaeus, what's he doing? He's calling out and, and he's saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. And I, I mean, he's. You know, he's crying out. The Bible says he's crying out. Jesus, have mercy on me. And so many, not a few, many told him to stop it. I don't know why they told him to stop it. Are, is Bartimaeus embarrassing them? Is it like, well, we want Jesus to think that everything is good, everything is great, that we don't have any problems in our village, in our town, our city, and we certainly don't want this scruffy, dirty beggar sitting on the side of the highway bothering Jesus. Just stop it, stop it, Bartimaeus. You know, I mean, Bartimaeus, you're a nothing. You're a nobody. Just stop it. You can't do anything. You, you know, he's not interested in you. 
I don't know. I mean, they just told him to stop it. But he's a wise man because he didn't listen to him. You know, you know what? He went against the crowd. He didn't listen to the crowd. Do you ever hear the saying that following the crowd can lead you nowhere? Sometimes you have to be, you have to break away from the crowd and you have to stand your ground because you know from the Word of God and from the Holy Spirit of God, you know the will of God because you read the Word of God and you got to stand your ground. And he stands his ground. And what does he do? He says, but he cried the more a great deal. They wanted him to stop it. And he ramps it up. He volumes it up. And the frequency of his, and the intensity of his cries increases. I mean, I personally believe he's crying at the top of his lungs. Thou, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And I want you to see something here that I think is absolutely awesome in verse number 49. Now you, you understand who Jesus is. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He is God. And I want you to see, I want you to see what God does when you cry out in Jesus' name. You know, I mean, wouldn't you agree God has a lot going on in the universe? Wouldn't you agree with me? He's got a lot going on. I mean, by him all things consist. I mean, God is literally holding the universe together and, and keeping it from flying apart, keeping it from burning up. But, but when a blind beggar cries out in Jesus' name, and I want you to see in verse number 49, God stood still. Don't you agree Jesus had a lot going on 2,000 years ago? He had a lot going on. You know, and, and here's the great lesson for our lives. If you'll follow the example of blind Bartimaeus, you ask in Jesus' name, you, you, refuse, you, you refuse to listen to the crowd when they say to you, you know, hey, it, it's not going to do any good. It never works. Nothing ever changes. And so you're wasting your, you're wasting your breath. You know, I mean, you, you, you just, well, just knock it off. And, and when you are like blind Bartimaeus, and that's like just pouring gas on the fire and you just ramp it up even more in your prayer life. And I mean, why is he doing this? You know, he's, he's an adult. You know, he spent his life doing this, being a beggar, sitting on, the, on a highway. And why is he doing this? I mean, why is Bartimaeus persisting in prayer unto God? Why? I'll tell you why. Because he believes. He believes. You know, people who really believe the promises of God, they don't stop crying out to God. Because they believe. And they know. 
at some point, at some time, God is going to send them the help that they're crying out for. And we live in a world that's telling us, what a waste of life. Spending your time reading the promises of God, spending your time calling out to God, spending your life believing the word of God. What a waste of life. But you know what? Bartimaeus didn't listen to the crowd. And Jesus stood still in verse 49 and commanded him to be called. I mean, I mean, look at this. Would you look at this? The great God of glory, God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, out of that Thousands of people, you know, everybody wants his attention. Everybody would like to have the notoriety that would come by Jesus paying attention to them. But, but who is Jesus calling out for? Who is Jesus reaching out to? The man that would not stop praying. I want to ask you a question. Have you stopped praying about... Have you stopped praying? Have you given up? In some area of your Christian life? Well, I'll tell you this. Bartimaeus didn't give up. And uh, so let's see what happens. I mean, who does Jesus go to? He goes to an old, dirty, scruffy beggar sitting on the side of a highway that everybody's telling to shut up. And uh, Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they, and they call the blind man. Of all the people, they called the blind man saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. You call on Jesus, you can expect he's going to call on you, amen? You see, what this is, is God responding to a prayer request. What this is, is God answering a prayer request. That's what's happening here. You know, someone said prayer is a two-way street. It's you talking to God, but it's also God talking to you. And that's what's happening here. In verse 50, he casting away his garment. Wow. Rose and came to Jesus. He rose and came to Jesus. Wow. Wow. Look at uh, look at Matthew. Now mark your place, but look at Matthew eleven twenty eight. What have you What have you given up about? What have you stopped praying about? What is it? Bartimaeus didn't give up. Bartimaeus didn't stop. Bartimaeus wouldn't stop. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, the words of Jesus, come unto me. And that's what he's commanding Bartimaeus to do now. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Look at John chapter 6, please. John, the gospel, chapter 6. John chapter 6 and uh, John 6 verse 35 and I'm going to read 35 and 36. So John chapter 6 verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, 
hold on here. Let me. Okay, that's that's my typo here. So, go back to uh, Mark chapter ten. We saw the one in Matthew that I wanted you to see. So, and John or Mark ten, Mark ten, verse fifty one. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What? You know, I, you know what I'm I'm going to venture to say right now. Right about now, I'm thinking that blind Bartimaeus is really glad that he didn't listen to the crowd when they told him to stop praying. You know, I can only imagine what they were saying to him. He doesn't care about you. You're, you're, you're a nobody nothing. You're a beggar. You're a dirty old beggar sitting on the side of the road. You just as well stop your crying out. And I bet right, I'm thinking right about now, Bartimaeus is really glad that he didn't listen to the crowd. Jesus says, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive. My sight. You know, it's possible that he had never seen his parents. It's possible that he had, he had never seen other, his siblings. It's possible he's never seen anybody. It's possible he's never seen anything with his eyes. I mean, I can understand that, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said, verse 52, Jesus said unto him, go thy way, and the next two words, please, class, the next two words are what? Thy faith hath made thee whole. What did it? What brought this blessing? And because, because he had faith, he refused to do what? To stop praying. A great evidence of faith, a great proof that a man has faith, that a woman has faith, is they refuse to stop praying. Even when the crowd says, he's not going to listen to you, it's not doing any good, you'll be blind the rest of your life, sitting by the highway side, Jesus says, Jesus is explaining to Bartimaeus why he is being healed. And the reason he's being healed is because he refused to stop trusting and believing Jesus. He refused. The Bible says, keep the what? Paul, Paul the Apostle says, I have kept the faith. And immediately he received his sight. Now again, I'm asking you, what have you given up on? What have you stopped praying about? You know when that voice comes to your mind, it's not going to happen. God's not going to do it. And by the way, who is the liar? 
Who is the liar? The devil. And I want you to see the last statement, because as far as I'm concerned, this is the icing on the cake. You know, a lot of people, when they get what they want from God, did you know this about a lot of people? They just forget about God. Oh, I got what I wanted. I used God. I got what I wanted from God. And then you know what they do? They forget all about God. They go on with their life and they just live their life selfishly, self-centered. Just forget about God. But not this man. Look what he does. What did he do? Last, last statement. He got his sight and did what, class? Followed Jesus in the way. And he lived the rest of his life, I believe, serving his Savior. So, you can give up if you want to. These are very trying times. These are very strange, really different times. And I guess I could give up if I decide to. But after looking at the true Bible account of blind Bartimaeus, anybody who gives up on God is a fool. Absolute fool. Say, what are you going to do, pastor, in these weird, strange times that are just turning everything upside down in biblical Christianity, in the local New Testament church, what are you going to do, preacher? I'm going to follow the example of blind Bartimaeus. That's what I'm going to do. And I recommend you do the same. Amen? Let's pray. A father, oh my, what a wonderful, uh, true account of a man who lived 2,000 years ago, of a man who called out in Jesus' name, a, a man who called out in faith, a man who refused to stop calling out when everybody told him to stop. And then... Not only did, did faith do, uh, God bless the faith with a miracle of healing, but after the man got what he wanted from you, Lord, he gave his, the rest of his life to you. He gave the rest of his life to you, and he followed you, and he loved you, and he obeyed you, and he served you. I'm looking forward to meeting Bartimaeus, no longer blind Bartimaeus, but I'm sure looking forward to meeting him, Lord. And I thank you for his wonderful example that we must never, never give up and quit praying and believing you. Never. Now, I especially pray right now for anyone that uh, has joined us by video. If, uh, if, Lord, they do not know Jesus, if they've never invited Jesus to come into their life, Jesus who died to pay for their sins, the sins of the world, Jesus, who was buried and rose again the third day to save us from death and hell. You know, Father, I pray especially for that one right now, that they're hopeless, they're without God, their life is, has no meaning, has no purpose, unfulfilled. Um, they're living in fear. I mean, these awful, catastrophic events that are coming upon the world right now, God, I pray that right now they, they would invite Jesus, 
They would ask Jesus to come into their life. They would ask Jesus to forgive them of all their sins and to save them from hell. I pray that many will accept you, Lord Jesus, because most assuredly, all of the signs of the times indicate you're coming soon. And they need to get ready to meet you. Lest they be left behind to go through the great tribulation here on earth. Oh God, I pray that they'll repent. They'll turn from their rebellion, their sin against you by accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. They would do that right now. God, help them before it's too late. Now, God, bless your word word now and help us to follow the example of Bartimaeus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.